FA Cup behind you. There it is, the, uh, uh, the the banner behind you, different backdrop to normal. Yeah. Um, what does the FA Cup mean to you? What does it conjure up in your mind? Well, I mean, it's it, it's a unique uh, competition, I think, in the in the world with with that that many teams competing. Um, you know, and and I think uh, some clubs will will have already played a number of games to, you know, to get to this stage. Um, of course, I think every single one of us we we have a, you know, the, the memories of 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 great games or you know the giant killing games and things like that. So it's a it's an incredible competition that that um, people can you know can can dream about you know getting a great tie against a huge club um i think all all of those things are are sort of embedded in our in our culture in this country and if you've if you've loved football at some point you you know you you've fallen in love with the romance of the FA Cup which ones was it for you then growing up so i mean for me it's Mickey Thomas's free kick for for Wrexham against against Arsenal there was Sutton beating Coventry not long since won it which, which was like the earliest one in your mind that well this is quite started. this is actually a bit um of a sad one in in, in many ways but um being so excited to uh, my brother's a big Tottenham fan and we sat down to watch Tottenham versus Forest and Paul Gascoigne of course was you know a massive player for I'm sure all, all all lads that were kicking a ball around at that period were really, you know, blown away by Gaza. And it was really sad to see he was so pumped and you know, he he just so desperately wanted to to be on that pitch and, and to play in the FA Cup and win and uh for him to get that injury was was really quite a sad moment and uh, I remember that one quite well. I remember being really upset. I wasn't a Spurs fan, so I was just upset that Gaza was hurt whereas um, you know, I think I think for my brother in the end it was quite a joyous day. But yeah, that that was a strong memory I think for me. You know, and I had a big occasion and the two. I think Spurs wore their their new kit and they had the the first time we'd seen long a team. Shorts. Yeah, with the long shorts. And when they came walking out, we was like, wow, that's a bit bit out there. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, all of those things I think go into it, don't they? You know, when you see the players. Often on the pitch, you know, with the I think the famous one with the Liverpool Spice Boys with the blue suits on the pitch before, you know, all these type of things uh, I remember. But yeah, certainly I, I think I always feel like that's the one that that stands out for me. The, that Gaza moment, I think it was just he, he he was such a ball of energy, wasn't he, and such a joy, and, and you know he, he never lost that childish love for football and just wanted to play in a big game and be a hero, and, and it was quite sort of sad in the end. Yeah, I think a lot of people on the other side of the trend will probably say that Roger Milford should have sent him off, but we'll probably not go down that debate, really, for, for the two yeah. challenges on Gary Parker and then yeah. Gary Charles. I get that. Um, yeah. What about then having, obviously, working in the in the football industry, have you had have you had many happy memories in, in, in the FA Cup? Has it brought you much joy? Really? Um, in all honesty, not, not so much. I think that you, you um, in, in League One and League Two, um, you you kind of the the joy is really a big game. I think we we played Chelsea um, years ago when I was working for Swindon. We we played Chelsea and uh, you know they were all there. Jose Mourinho was a manager. Uh, young Kevin De Bruyne got injured that night. Actually, done his ACL, bless him. And uh, um, I think uh, we we actually started the game very well. And at one point, uh, Mourinho brought. Um, he brought a player on uh, who scored, and then he substituted him immediately. And yeah, we I felt very much like we were second fiddle to the Premier League at that moment. Ramirez, he brought Ramirez on, he scored. Um, Fernando Torres played, and John Terry played. Sem was captain, and I think you know when you're when you're competing in League One and you you play Chelsea, it's a pretty special occasion. And they brought down a full you know full squad, and Mourinho is manager. I think you know those those sort of things you don't ever forget when you're competing at that level. So, yeah, those, those type of nights were, were were quite quite special, and it can only really happen in the FA Cup that you can play like a competitive game against a Premier League side. Yeah, well, that speaking to Sam Austin about exactly that really being able to do that for Kidderminster and beating Reading and then getting the chance to 
almost almost beat beat West Ham. And that's that's what you kind of have to think about is it is at stake here, isn't it? You've got a first round tie and you've still got another tie after that. But but the reward potentially at the end of it is something potentially magical. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Um so you know, we, we we're preparing already for, for the game and um for sure we we you know we we're we're playing the game to win and uh we would love to, to progress in the in the competition and like I say, who knows what, what could happen. You quite often see, uh, and people always debate this every year, whether it's a distraction or whether, whether it's a, a benefit to teams, but you do often see su- successful teams marrying that with a good cup run. Not only the very top teams, you know, your Manchester Cities and so yeah. they've got a squad to be able to do it, but even further down, those that are able to go on good cup runs, it, it can go very neatly hand in hand, can't it, with a successful league campaign? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure it can, you know, and I think that um, there's times for all all coaches and managers I'm sure that they they have to admit there are times when a cup game is something that is a threat to your squad and is a problem and you're trying to compete and manage the squad at the same time um, and, I, and there are other occasions where you have several players that you know that are really desperate to get some game time and you can make one or two you know changes but still Keep the you know the full strength of your team if you like because often you you'll have two or three players in your squad that are competing for the first you know for the first place in the in the side and there's nothing between them so a cup game can be a, like a welcome relief for the coach and for the for the players so I think it depends very much on the state of play in, in that moment when the game comes along but um, we're we're certainly we're certainly preparing to win and uh, to make a really good performance and. Uh, you know that 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 the rest will take care of itself. Is a good cup run something that's on your sort of managerial bucket list, if you like? You know, you've had a promotion, you've had a, a success at Wembley. Is there something in there as well that makes you think oh, I want a good cup run as well at some point? Y- yes and no. I, I think that um, I would never try to to do anything that I thought was irresponsible to try to, you know, to try to fulfil a, a need to to you know to tick tick a box, if you like. Um, I think very much my, my process is to try to manage the group uh, according to, to the scenario that is that is set out in front of me. As I said before, you know we, yeah, I've, I'm sure all, all county fans will will know that I've made changes in cup competitions before. I, I I don't think that I've ever seriously weakened the the team compared to you know the the opponents that we have. We've played a few teams from lower divisions that. Um, in my opinion, the, the the side that I've put on the pitch is more than capable capable of winning that game, and we've we've come out second best on too many occasions, I believe, in in those scenarios. But we're playing against another League Two side, so we have to be very competitive, and we have to we have to play a strong team to to have a chance to try and win the game. And first, I was, I was just about to start looking at their form earlier, and then I thought, what's the point? It's the FA Cup. Are, are you a, are you a believer of that as well? That none of that matters. Yeah, definitely. I, I think there's. I can't think off the top of my head, but I know there's been teams that have been in a relegation scrap, and you know, have, have, have had a cup run and, and got to like the quarterfinals of the FA Cup or or, or better. I think, but um, I think Wigan didn't they? Wigan. I think uh, did did Millwall play Manchester United in the final and get relegated? I don't know, but. Um, you know, they, they, this can happen, yeah. So, for sure, the form goes out the window because so much of football is uh, is is driven by the mentality of the players and the emotion of the players. And uh, depending on your form in the league, you can have a negative or a positive set of emotions. Depending on your form in the league, the cup can be something really positive. Depending on your form in the league, the cup can be something really negative. So I think when when you look at look at it through that lens, you understand, you know, how can this team have beat opponents from divisions above in the FA Cup and had a great run and got relegated in their league? Well, I think the answer is the unseen, what you what you can't physically see or touch. It's the the mentality and the emotion of the of the players in those competitions versus another one that is giving them a different. A different type of performance. Looks brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Global Radio.
Yeah, hi there. Sorry, I just put my camera on. There we go. Hi, Lee. Hello. Good to see you again. Yeah, you too. Uh, Dave's obviously covered all the football stuff very well, so I won't get you to repeat yourself. Um, so a slightly less happy subject, of course, is um, Adam Johnson, the Panthers player, who lost his life at the weekend. Now, I know that um, the club, Notts County, have asked for a minute's silence ahead of Saturday's game, but I just wanted to ask how you and the team have taken that news. Obviously, another person in sport, something none of us want to see something that none of us would expect well I mean uh, recording in progress you know devastation really and uh, I think as, as you quite rightly said drawing the comparison you know of uh, an athlete doing what he loves and look we, we, we know that there's a risk of, of injury in, in football and in all sports and I think every player is you know, prepared for that at a young age, you, you know, I could could pick up an injury here. That That is not something that anybody goes into the game expecting to happen. You know, you're in a, you're in a safe place, it's organised, there's, there's laws to the games and it's just impossible to imagine that you can be involved in a, in a game where, where that, where that can happen. So, I think disbelief and then, Without, without, without wanting to, just naturally the human brain draws comparisons between that arena and our own arena. What happened? What? How would that? How would that? How would we be able to cope if that happened here at Meadow Lane with one of our players, you know, that we love and the fans are, you know, fans will have had posters on the on the bedroom walls and shirts with the name, and now that that person has suffered something. So so horrific. They lost their life. It's just it, it, it's hard actually to it's hard to put it into context and actually believe that it really happened. That's how I feel. Um, and of course, uh, you know, uh, thinking how thinking about losing uh, losing the son is is unbearable. Is unbearable. And again, you you can't help you can't help having those thoughts. What what the families must be. Going through is uh, it, it's very very difficult to comprehend how that can happen, and of course I understand. Look, I want to be clear that I already understand from the from the small bits of information that I have that this is a freak accident. This is nothing malicious. No one is to blame for this, and I'm fully aware of that. Um, but it still doesn't make it easier to understand how it can happen, um, and it doesn't make it it doesn't make it any easier to try to to not impose that same scenario on what we do here because because I have I've run that I've run that imaginary scenario and it's 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 just unbearable yeah completely agreed uh, one final thing on that all the tributes that I've seen um, outside Mays Point Arena all the messages and sentiments echoing around the city I don't know what you can say about Nottingham itself um, be they county fans forest fans not even football fans so many people seem to have come together uh, in support and in solidarity since what happened it's an incredible place and, and I've learnt that more and more the longer I've been here it is incredible um, you know and in terms of sport we, th this city is really putting a lot of others to, to shame because you know you look at this this area that we're in when we have these two football clubs opposite each other an incredible cricket ground the water sports is, place is incredible um, I've been down there a couple of times. It's just incredible, and then we have the arena there. You know, we have everything. And then when it's time to come together, we we of course we have rivalry. We we know that that's, that's actually healthy. You know, because you, you need to have a tribe to belong to and a colours to fly up the mast. And that's really, I think, it's sort of a human instinct. But there is also a maturity about Nottingham that that, that understands that when things like this happen, all that is just is just fun and games. We put that to one side, and I, I've learned I've learned that being in this city because, honestly, I tell you the truth. When when you live in London, it is so big, it is so vast and so diverse that there isn't really so much of a a, f a general feeling coming together in London. Not really. There's areas of in London that people feel more, you know, attached to that area. But Nottingham is one place that everybody. Feels and look, I'm I'm a I'm a guest, you know. I've been made a very welcome guest, but I'm a guest and I'm aware aware of that. But the people that 
that grow up here and that this is where they're from, they show solidarity in the right moments. You know, we, and we, we saw the terrible incidents that happened over the summer and people lost their life in that terrible uh, terror attack, for want of a better term. And the way that people came together then is, is a like, properly, properly community and an understanding of your own people. And uh, I love that because, yeah, I didn't probably, I didn't really have that myself because London is just colossal. It's a mega city and you, you don't quite have that same feeling.